Hi everybody, Natalia at OutstandingCrochet.com. In this video, I would like to show you how to crochet thermal stitch. Uh, I'm not an inventor of that stitch. I don't know who is. If you know, please reach out. I would love to give that person a credit. First of all, I want to mention that you can change playback speed of any video on YouTube by tapping three uh, dots at the upper right corner and change the setting there to to the one you are comfortable with. If you're not familiar with my work, probably every other crochet pattern I make is a back pattern. So I'm making a lot of straps and handles for those bags. And I've been using different stitches for that. And recently, a couple of members of my Facebook pattern support group mentioned thermal stitch. And I looked into that and I'm pretty happy I did because that stitch is kind of perfect for that purpose. It has a uh, double thickness and very smooth edges. Let's take a look at this uh, sample. That's how thick that stitch is. And the edges are perfect. It's very good looking. And it's everything you need for a good looking strap or handle, right? So here's a handle I made yesterday. It's very pretty looking, right? Good looking handle. And keep in mind that when you start a handle, for this one I made eight foundation stitches and its width is about 2.8 centimeters. Uh, but when it's fully stretched, and that's what inevitably happens when you use your back, its width goes down to about two centimeters, so 30% is gone. So keep it in mind when you start a handle to make a appropriate number of foundation stitches. Um, another thing, um, when you make a strap, when you determine the length of the strap you need, uh, I suggest to use a measuring tape, attach one of its ends to your bag, try it on, determine the length you're comfortable with. And when you're making a strap um, and you feel like you're about to reach your desired length, uh, measure it fully stretched like that. I know that some people reinforce their handles with some materials. I never do. I always measure my straps fully stretched and never have a problem with them stretching too much and my straps or handles being too long. Now let's actually start our thermal stitch. Uh, in the couple of videos I watched, um, it is started with a chain foundation, but once I learned foundation cord, I never went back to chain foundation. So that's what I'm also going to do with the thermal stitch. So we start with a slip knot and let's make eight foundation cord stitches. So this is my tail. This is working end. Tail, working end. This is my first foundation stitch. Tail, working end. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Foundation cord. Now we're going to make row one. We start with chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And let's take a look at the foundation cord. And our first stitch will be in that first stitch of the foundation cord. We're going to make eight single crochet stitches. When you insert your hook, make sure you have two loops on your hook. seven and eight, last stitch, eight 
single crochet stitches into the foundation cord. Now moving to row two, again starting with chain one, which does not count as a stitch. So let's take a look at here we have eight stitches and let's take a look at the bottom <coughs> of the foundation cord. We need also eight loops here because we will be working in a back loop of every single crochet and in the loop of the foundation. So we need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the first stitch we will be looking into to find that stitch before you start row two. So we insert a hook into the back loop of the first single crochet and into that uh, stitch, into that loop from the foundation. And making single crochet. Now second stitch again into the back loop and next loop of the foundation cord. And so on, repeat it for every stitch eight times. Count your stitches, always count your stitches. This is my fourth stitch. The first three rows are kind of nuisance. You have to uh, closely look at the loops. Um, really watch out not to make a mistake. But after that, it becomes easy breezy. Okay, this is my seventh single crochet and eighth. The last stitch and last stitch of the foundation. This is row two. Row three, again, starting with turning chain. Doesn't count as stitch. And again, let's find first find that those eight loops, the second loops we will be working into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the first loop. Let's stretch it a little bit to make sure we can find it easily. So I already made turning chain one, inserting hook into the back loop of my first single crochet and into that loop uh, from below. First single crochet, second and into the next loop at the same time, two, three, four, Six, seven, and the last loop. And there's two loops in which we have to work that stitch, kind of already brought together by, you know, we've been folding that piece we already made. So there easy to find those two last loops to make stitch into. So this is row three. Row four, again we're making chain one, turning chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And you can see that um, it's going to be much easier now because the stitches, the second loops we have to work into are kind of brought um, up a little bit, so it's easier to find them. But still, um, it's good to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the first stitch we will be working into. Inserting my hook in the back loop of the first single crochet and in the second loop. So you can see that it's much easier to find those second loops now, but uh, always count stitches um, sometimes when I was working on my first uh, strap yesterday, I made mistakes a few times, uh, but I will 
could spot it right away because at the end when you're making last stitch you know that something is wrong so uh, unravel that um, row and start again and my problem was that I sometimes would skip one of those second loops and at the end I wouldn't have that uh, loop to work into so that's a possibility and just be aware of it and if something looks wrong at the end of um, any row just unravel go back so I made seven stitches um, about to make my last stitch and that last stitch is kind of um, looks a little bit different so just make sure those stitches already brought together always so but make sure when you insert your hook make sure to make to have two loops on your hook when you're making that stitch and from now on it's it's actually uh, kind of the same there is nothing really different from row four and up to the end so I'm going to make row five now and then show you how to finish um, working on the thermal stitch because last row of that stitch is a little bit different let's now make our finishing row chain one turning chain one and instead of inserting hook in the back loop and that um, loop below insert your hook in both loops of that single crochet and into that loop uh, so in three loops at the same time and do it for every stitch and then I will show you the result how it looks like seven and eight so now let's compare our last row with a regular thermal stitch row here you can uh, see fabric kind of uh, splits at the edge into two parts we have those extra loops here to work into and uh, by working into three loops at the same time uh, we created a nice looking edge thank you for watching